Hi, I'm Rob Bentz, an instructor here at Dunwoody College of Technology. Uh, we've been going through some IP address basics and subnetting in part one and part two. Uh, we're looking at part three here to finish off some of the ideas that we've started in those first two portions. And we're actually going to look at the binary process of figuring out where our logical networks start and end and the ranges in all of the valid IP addresses that we could apply to a uh, computer configuration in a network that has been subnetted. So in the first part, uh, we talked about the IP basics. And in the second part, uh, I showed you the formula 2n minus 2 that allows us to figure out how many bits we're going to borrow. Now, towards the end of that, that segment there, uh, we determined that we needed three bits. And we also got to the second step of the subnetting where you determine the new mask. Once we know the new mask, the third step is to figure out all of the uh, actual logical network breakdowns that we have, uh, where the logical networks lie, the ranges of the machines that we can uh, assign addresses in there, uh, their network IDs and their broadcast IDs. So we're working kind of on step four here, and, and, and uh, it's a multi-portion step. Uh, the, the first thing is to take a look at your your IP address and what you've been given. Uh, the next step there is to figure out what it is that you need and then you run it through the formula and determine the new mask. Now we're looking at the last process once we have the new mask. Where is all of this going to work itself out? Where are we going to have the, the, the logical dividing lines in our network? So taking a look back at um, our IP address that we were given, we had the 192.168.1.0 space that we were given. And we divided that into uh, six logical networks. And that told us through the formula that we needed to borrow three bits. So I've got that up here. We borrowed three bits going into this section here, which will actually change the way this looks. These zeros now will become ones. And that new mask value was uh, 224 on that last octet. Now, looking at it at the binary level here, we can figure out real quickly where these networks are going to be if we know that dividing line in the binary. And we know that the three bits are all that we need to make up the network portion that we're borrowing into. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a little grid identifying the network portions as n, and then the last portions are all for the host. So what I end up with here is three bits that belong to the new network that we're subnetting out, and then five bits that belong to the host portion of each of those host or uh, networks that we've determined, each of those networks. So we had a couple of rules in there uh, in the last section that I told you about. And just to refresh your memory, all zeros in the host section will indicate a network ID. That's what we're going to figure out first, is the network ID area. And then all ones in the host section indicate the broadcast ID. And we'll figure that out. And then whatever's left in between is going to be the range of valid IP addresses that we can use. So first step, determine the network IDs. And again, looking at that rule, all zeros in the host section, that's right here. We know this host section, so we're going to just put zeros, and this is going to go all the way through. Over here on the network side of things, we just need to simply figure out all of the possibilities that exist in binary. And to do that, you just count it up. So uh, you start with zero, and then you go to one, and two, and three, and carry that all the way up. And I'll do about half of these just so that we can get the idea. So what I have here is the first few possibilities that um, the binary will reveal. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, just looking at these three bits, if we convert that kind of mentally in your head here, you can see that 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 in binary. But don't forget about these five bits out here, these host section bits, because again, the configuration that we use and what we have to type into the configurations of computers is a decimal number. 
So we have to convert all eight bits back to figure out what this is going to be. So I'm going to just label this zero here and move them on down the line and we'll convert the first one back and I'll show you how we determine the range for that first one and then you should be able to make the leap and do the rest of these. So one of the things about that formula, we have the 2n minus 2 deal, um, we lose the first and second portions of this subnetted process. So what you'll find here is this possibility that we have is actually lost. So the first real subnet that we have that we could work with is this one. So we're going to convert this back to decimal here and figure out um, what that new network ID is going to be. So what I like to do when I've got a grid like this is uh, I'll just take the binary scale that I know and, and add it in on top here. So out here this would be 128, this one is 64, this is 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. And those are all those binary values and we can convert it pretty quickly that way. And if I look down here I can see that this one's in the 32 slot, I don't have anything else. So this one actually converts back to 32 in its decimal value. What we have to do is bring that back to the entire um, IP address that we were given in the first place. So our first network is really at 192.168.1.32. And if we look at this carefully, we aren't violating any rules yet. The, you know, the all zeros in the host section, all ones in the host section, those rules there. Not, none of that is being broken. In fact, it's being proven. The all zeros in the host section right here, that's a network ID. So this is indeed a network ID. All we've done is looked at the last octet here, took the decimal value, put it back to the stuff that we were given, and this is the address that we end up with. If we take a look at the next one, convert that back, you'll see that we've got a 1 in the 64 slot. There's no zeros there. So this one converts back to 64. And again, its network ID, when we combine everything together, is 1681.64. So looking at these networks now that we've subnetted out, we actually can see two of those logical networks that have been created, the 32 net here and the 64 net. Again, all zeros in the host section. So these are all net IDs out here. And you can run this process all the way down. You, you count this all the way out, you'll get to 7. and just like losing the first one here, you'll lose the last one and you'll see that you have six possibilities in between. Convert all of those back to decimal and you'll see all of those values out here. It should go 32, 64, 96, 128, 160, 192, and 224 and that's where you stop. Looking at the other side of it, we have to figure out the, um, the broadcast ID. If you figure out the network ID and the broadcast ID, whatever's left in between is the range and that's really what we want to know. We want to know the range because that's what we apply to a machine that's sitting on a network or a, a router or a printer, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the other rule and apply it here. Instead of zeros, we're going to apply ones. So I'm just going to flip all these zeros to ones so we can see what those look like when you convert it back. And I've got all the numbers here for the binary up in the grid and that makes it a little easier to do. And there's a couple of tricks here that you can use. Uh, one of them, you could just add all of this up. And you know, 16 and 32 and 8 and 4 and 2 and, and 1, you'll find that that comes up to 63 if you add all of that up. Another kind of cool trick to the binary is that you see that I have all of these on the next possibility, if I were to add one in binary to this, I would get 64 and that turns all that off, right? So if you kind of know your binary scale pretty well and you know the next number here, if these were added a one to them, you'd get 64 out of that deal. You can make the leap pretty quickly. You just look here and say, oh, that one's 64, so this must be one less. So either way you do that, they both work. Um, just make sure you pick the one you're good at. So you find that that one's 63. Looking down at the next one here, uh, you'll find that this one, I'm going to use that fancy little deal that I was telling you about there, but I've got to add some of this. 
you'll find that this comes up at 95. Now, what we've determined here is the broadcast ID, but this is the last octet again. So I'm going to erase some of this here because the range is going to fit in the middle here. I'm going to rewrite those two numbers out there so that we can see the net ID on this side, the broadcast ID on that side, and then the range will be in the middle. So what we'll see here is we've determined the start point and the end point of each one of our, our networks. Now I'm only doing two of them here, the first two valid ones that exist. There will be four others that are valid and then the last one is invalid. We lose that one in the process. So I've got the network ID here, I've got the broadcast ID here, and these relate to each other, so this one here and this one here, whatever's in between those two, that's the valid range. So we just simply clock this one up, one, one digit, dot 33, and we take this one and we go back one digit, and we get dot 62. Again, you have to bring in the rest of the stuff that we've been given, so the range really is 192, 168, 1.33, all the way through 192, 168, 1.62. And that's this entire subnet here that we've created. That is a logical network that we can apply that is different or cannot talk to this other logical network without a router. It's divided now. And that's because of that new mask that we determined earlier of 255.255.255.224. That new mask creates all of this stuff here. So first network ID is at 32. That network ID has assignable IP addresses from .33 all the way up to .62. It has a broadcast of .63. And then from there, it clicks into the next network, which is dot 64. And again, we can do the same process there. Take this one, add one to it. You take that one, subtract one from it, and that'll show you everything that's in between. So this would be 65 all the way through. This is going to be 94 here. So if we put all of the pieces into place here, we can see the first two logical networks that we've created in our subnetting process all the way through this part one, part two, and part three. Now, again, you can finish this grid off and uh, work your way through. You should end up with, you know, we lost the first one on here. There are eight overall possibilities, but only six of those are going to be usable. So you lose the first one, you lose the last one, but all of those other ones that are in between are valid. And from this point on, you should have four more that you could figure out that will actually function and work on a network. And also keep in mind in this process that we've divided a Class C network. You can also divide Class Bs, and you can also divide Class As. Uh, the math in those gets a little bit longer uh, in terms of what the binary looks like, but the process is no different. You just have to know where those dividing lines are. So keep that in mind. If you're up for a challenge, go take a look at a Class B address. See if you can divide it into, oh, let's say roughly 1,000 networks and see if you can work that one out. Um, those are a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.